that actually represents the amount of daily calls domestic violence helplines receive nationwide. 500%? The presence of a handgun in a domestic violence situation increases the likelihood of homicide by 500%. 8.3 billion? That's the amount of money society loses each year due to intimate partner violence. And sadly, addiction and domestic violence often go hand in hand. A recent study claimed that 65% of gambling addicts reported to be the perpetrator or victim of domestic violence. And while women are often the victims, men quietly are victims as well. About 5 million men were the victims of domestic violence last year. Domestic violence isn't a problem for just victims. It's actually a problem for all of us. So do your part. Do not stay silent. This is an emergency yeah, line. Uh, large with half pepperoni, half mushroom. Um, you know you've called 911. This is an emergency line. Do you know how long it'll be? Okay, ma'am. Is everything okay over there? Do you have an emergency or not? Yes. And you're unable to talk because... Right, right. Okay, is there someone in the room with you? Just say yes or no. Yes. Okay, um... It looks like I have an officer about a mile from your location. Are there any weapons in your house? No. Can you stay on the phone with me? No. Uh, see you soon. Thank you. What's up? Welcome to the Talk It Up radio show. Today our topic is domestic violence. You must have thrown a thousand pitches teaching him to hit a home run. Spent countless Saturdays running routes so he could learn to hit an open receiver. Endless afternoons teaching him how to hit the three-pointer. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Teaching boys that all violence against women is wrong is one of the most important things a man can do. Learn how to start the conversation at teachearly.org. Brought to you by Futures Without Violence and the Ad Council. been here too long feeling sorry Miss Patty LaBelle I've been too upset to make the first day I want to be free but now I see the light at rainbows in finally I found my peace with the Domestic violence, a nasty disease in every single walk of our lives. Every community, every race, every color, every creed. In the church, in the bar rooms, domestic violence is nasty. We're dedicating this entire show to those who have been victims or who are going through domestic violence and have no way out or think they don't have any way out. We're here to uh, talk to some people who experienced it talk to some people who have survived it and hope that that will help somebody out there get over it and get out of it Because you walk with me In preparation for this show, Beverly and I watched a couple of videos of domestic violence and we had to stop. We had to stop 
Um, it, it usually happens behind closed doors. Sometimes it's a silent treatment, but it happens in the cars at work. And a lot of times the victim is so scared to talk, scared for their lives, scared for their family's lives, scared for their children's lives. We have someone in our studios, Elder Angela Pittman, who's going to tell us about her story also. We also have renowned author, Miss Trisha Ann Morris. She's my goddaughter. She's in Jamaica. I hope she can make the call. She says that the rains are coming. I spoke to my mom earlier. numbers to call if you want to uh, contribute to this discussion today is 407-894-1680. You can also listen to the radio station, the WOKB 1680, the heart and soul of the community, on 518-712-0057 from anywhere in the world. It's a free call. Well, based on your cell phone service, my apologies. And you can follow WOKB on Twitter, Instagram, and even like us on Facebook. You're in tune to the Talking Up Radio Show. My wife, Mrs. Beverly Martin, is on the red mic over there. And we're also streaming live on YouTube via um, our website, www.talkitupradioshow.com. And you can watch our show live. And if you miss it, you can also go back to our website and see previous shows, which you can maybe use in um, some educational purposes, especially for this topic. Welcome to the Talk It Up Radio Show. Beverly? Welcome to the show. Uh, great to have your listeners um, joining us this week. Uh, it's a very somber topic for me. Uh, this month, in the month of October, it's uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And we want to draw attention. We want to stop um, all of this that's happening if it's possible to stop it the more we talk about it the more we bring awareness to it um, domestic violence thrives when we are silent but if we take a stand and we work together we can end domestic violence we can talk about it and um, like I said you know bring awareness and so that the um, survivors will know that they're not alone and that there is support out there so welcome to the show. You're welcome to um, call in if you've been a survivor of domestic violence. Please feel free to call in. Let us know. Share your story. You know, you can briefly share. Maybe you will help someone out there or encourage someone who's listening. Our phone number is 407-894-1680. So um, join in the conversation as we try to stop this epidemic that's happening in our country and all over the world but uh, we want to welcome um, with us today in the studio is um, Elder Angela Pittman and I'm sure you've all heard uh, the story her, her daughter was brutally murdered her daughter's name is um, Remy Martina and she is a victim of uh, domestic violence she was brutally murdered so welcome to the show Elder Angela I'm sure you a, know, little, a little closer to the mic, Elder. It's been uh, you, can you can pull it to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it's been uh, a tough five years for you. It's been five years. Yes, yes. It'll be five years coming up in December. Yes, you're gonna push the mic. You can push. You can pull it up close to you if you want to sit back in the okay. chair. Okay. Much okay. better. Also on the phone is uh, Miss Nochel Hastings, mm -hmm. who's a very strong advocate against domestic violence. Okay. Are you hearing us, Nochel? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, great. So Hello, Nochelle. Welcome. Hi, Beverly. How are you? Um, Hi, Elder Pittman. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. We're doing good. Um, so, um, you know, I was just saying that um, when we're silenced about domestic violence, it makes it thrive. But when we talk about it, we stand up and work together, then we can end this. That is true, because a major majority of the times when you stand up to any bully, they'll back off. Mm-hmm. Leave it alone, it becomes one of those cancers that will kill you. 
and damages your family's lives, your neighbor's lives, your children, your friends for a long, long time. And we have one lady here, and we, we heard your story, Elder, and I'm telling you, I told Bev, she, she may not want to do this show, it but I, I, I am worse. It's, it's hard, mm -hmm. it's hard. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for the listeners, who I'm sure they've all heard, you know, what happened with your daughter, but just share with us, you know, what you can share, as you feel to share. Okay. Well, my journey started with um, my daughter was 30 years old. Mm -hmm. She has a she had a little girl at the time. She was seven, mm -hmm. and she was in a relationship with this man mm -hmm. um, coming out of high mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. Coming out of high school. And, of course, um, our family did have standards for our, our girls and our son, and uh, we never really wanted her to be with him. Mm -hmm. And he was the first boyfriend she had ever had. She didn't have a boyfriend until she was coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they had been in and out of a relationship for over a number of years, probably over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Toward the end, he ended up going to prison for two years. Mm -hmm. And um, in that process of time, uh, she be began to grow up and mature. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, the relationship was, you know, wasn't the same. equally. Mm -hmm. They weren't equal anymore. And mm -hmm. she was had just been developed into a beautiful young lady. She was working for a law firm, uh, had her own place, just doing good and happy and uh, you know, she was with the Lord and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just making life happen every day. And um, he came back in and was kind of jealous of the fact that she had sort of changed and she really came to the point where she didn't really need him. They didn't live together, but he would, you know, come at times and, you know, that he had, a, they had the little child together. Mm -hmm. Um her her situation is a little bit more unique than most I, i'm not going to say the most domestic violence because all of them are unique situations mm -hmm. but hers was a little different he was not uh violent toward her to that extent because right. we were always pretty much around her mm -hmm. he waited until we wasn't around mm -hmm. and that's when he decided to perpetrate his cause mm -hmm. and um so you're saying he was um pre premeditated premeditated he had yeah. planned to do it right way before it got to that point mm -hmm. so was she seeing somebody else no she wasn't seeing anyone else but she had befriended um I can't remember the basketball player's name. It okay. just left my mind. Well, we can leave it off the air. Yeah, we, can, we she, don't want yeah. to say names. Yeah. Yeah. She had befriended him. They became really good friends. Mm -hmm. right. and um, So that may have been the jealousy yes, there. Yes, and, and that's yeah, when it, you know, trigger. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she just, she had yeah. a good job. You know, she really didn't need a man at that time. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that bothered him a lot. Right, right. And, um he waited to the to an opportune moment right. moment that he had that he knew that we weren't around because right. her and my son actually lived together mm -hmm. so and you know he uh you know he murdered her uh mm -hmm. she, you know she never could put up a fight right. she never thought that he would do anything like that because so, yeah. i talked to her a day before it mm -hmm. happened she right. Never thought he would harm her. So it's been five years. Is he It'll in be jail? five years in December. He just got sentenced to life, life. in September. But it was premeditated, though. I thought it'd be death. Well, they 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 don't they can't give to the death sentence to someone that has a relationship. Tried to no has tried to uh, have an insanity plea. Oh oh. He didn't get the insanity plea, right, right. but he got the same sentence he would have got. If 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 it was if I was um with murder too he right. got the he got the same sentence he would have got right. other than getting they couldn't give him the death penalty so he's right. it's, it's life without parole yes okay mm -hmm. good good yes justice has been served. yes yes. yes. I'm that so did, sorry that for doesn't your bring your daughter back. No. no. And it doesn't heal the wounds. <laughs> no, I'm healing, though. But it's justice justice was yes, served. Mm -hmm. Yes. Justice was served. You know, in that yeah. process, you know, um, 
you know, the Lord does a lot right. of things to right. you for your heart, you right. know. Right. Yeah. And um, I was just going to ask you, how do you, um, I can't even comprehend, uh, I've been, I'm a Christian too, I can't comprehend how you forgive someone who's done such a horrible act to one of your child how do you how do you even begin to forgive you know how did that happen for you and has that happened it has happened and it happened immediately for me mm-hmm. because I just didn't have time to have unforgiveness in my heart mm-hmm. I didn't want to be bitter um, I had a great task before me to raise in her daughter mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. you, you forgive but you are human and you are natural being mm-hmm. um there were times when i was very angry mm-hmm. although my heart forgave him mm-hmm. you know you can be you can forgive but you that doesn't mean you know you totally oblivious oblivious to what has taken place right. so there 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 were times especially in the beginning that i knew i had forgiven him mm-hmm. but i was very angry mm-hmm. that he did that I thought it was very unfair mm-hmm. and I felt bad because we was not there to protect her right and you know she didn't call us we knew that she had called someone else that was in his family that didn't respond to help her mm-hmm. so you feel you you know you don't have time to dedicate your time to unforgiveness when you have so much other um, obstacles to face at that moment that she had passed right. you know mm-hmm. uh, she passed three days before my birthday mm-hmm. wow and four or five days before Christmas mm-hmm. and you know we had plans and mm-hmm. I've heard her talk about her plan so mm-hmm. you know all those different sounds of of, of her purpose were in my ear mm-hmm. and I didn't have time to uh, entertain not yeah. forgiving him mm-hmm. Really? So forgiveness yeah. was for you to um, it was it was yes. it was relatively to release you. right yes. immediately because right. I had a, a lot of other things that yes, I had to do. absolutely <laughs> no shell did you do you want to come in on this yeah you, no? you know Beverly I remember um, the day I was actually on the air with um, Let's Talk Money mm-hmm. and um, Angela called and all I could hear was her sobbing. Mm. And she's like, Michelle. She's like, Shelly, mm-hmm. I need you. Mm-hmm. Can you come? And I was like, Angela, what's wrong? The f- ironic part is the other host on my show, her name is Angela as well. Mm-hmm. So Glenn Allgood was on the, the uh, engineering desk, and he's like, what's going on? You know, what's wrong with Angela? She's right here. And um, I just told him I had to go. Mm-hmm. And I went outside the studio and she said, Remy is dead. She said, he killed her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what? We mm-hmm. were talking very recently before that about, you know, how, as Angela said, how different she had grown. and how mature and, you know, how she was developing. And and she's like, Miss Michelle, he ain't going to do nothing to me, you know. And I feel like Angela was feeling something, you know, like that mother's intuition. And to add to what she was saying about the, the forgiveness part, you had to know her daughter. Like, Remy was so carefree. Mm-hmm. Like, you, she don't care. Whatever you did, she will find a reason to forgive you. It's yes. like, you know. Like, and her, mo- like her mom. I, yes. I, I, like yes. her mom. Yes. Yes. And so I, I, listening to you now, Angela, thinking back, it's like, oh, my God, you were taking on Remy's spirit. Right. Mm. Like, you see, what's, what's, what's um, you, the hurtful part of this and the, the, scary, the most scary thing is that there were no signs. Yes. There were no signs, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I, my, our listeners have heard me talk about my experience with my mom and my dad. And, uh, you know, he abused her in front of the kids <laughs> when she was pregnant, whatever. And it was, to me, thinking about it as an adult, it's jealousy. Because mm-hmm. my mom was very, very ambitious. And dad, dad was um, easygoing and um, outgoing with mom and always, you know, if she gets pregnant, she gets a beating because he thinks it's not his child. Mm-hmm. And um, dad was illiterate. And I, I love my dad, you know, and I love my mom and I lost both of them. 
Mm. And I, I was never able to talk to them about it or get any closure because the last time it happened, I was 21 years old. I went home from, for lunch and saw him beating her. I put him against the wall with my hand in his throat and said, Dad, if you do it again, I'm going to kill you. I don't know if it happened again because I ne never lived with them, but I, I don't recall it happening, you know. But I, that's when I had the courage to do it, mm -hmm. you know. And it was five kids, and we all huddled together for comfort when it was happening. And it was always a cussing. And so we grew up in it. Mm -hmm. And then it happens in the neighborhood. You hear it's Mr. So-and-so cussing his wife or beating his wife. Mm -hmm. You know, it was prevalent, it w yeah. you know. And um, you would go to a friend's home, and then you would see the, the this going on. Mm -hmm. And usually it's a man. But um, being being abusive to his wife or, or and or his kids, but I mean men also get abused, mm -hmm. you know. And, Absolutely. Um, men yes. do get abused, and mm -hmm. um, that that's a little bit harder for them to talk about it because of their pride. Mm -hmm. And um, we, Nochelle, um, Miss Pittman, Beverly, and I, we have experienced it also. Uh, we're not ashamed to talk about it because mm -hmm. we don't want it to happen again to our kids. Beverly's daughter is here on the show with us also. And um, we just, you know, we thoroughly, thoroughly want to dedicate our lives against domestic abuse. You know, um, Nochelle, I really thank you for coming on at this late notice. I called you because when you responded to one of our um, Facebook posts, I remembered you. So I apologize. <laughs> and I really oh, applaud it's, it's you for coming so on such okay. short notice. No, you know? it's it's as I said this this month. There's an angel in the studio with you guys, mm -hmm. and if people understood what it takes for Angela to raise her voice, we were we were talking back in in the late 1990s, like 98 or so. We were walking on Orange and Central one day. We used to always have lunch, and we would pray. And she's like, you know, I feel such an urge that my ministry is to y'all towards young people, especially young girls, to help them. And for her to be able to selfish, selflessly utilize this time and her agony mm -hmm. to encourage and to speak life into young girls, Remy's memory will never die. Yes. I want to just touch on three points before I, I let you guys go back mm -hmm. to just really delving into this because I know Angela's got so much to bless us. Mm -hmm. But we dedicated, um, I don't even know if she's listening, but um, Gannett Gittins Robert mm -hmm. um, is the publisher of the Caribbean American Passport mm -hmm. News Magazine. And when I came to her with what had happened, she said, no, this has got to stop. Mm -hmm. Like, she founded the paper, but she gave space um, for leading ladies. Yes. So women could gain courage about who they are. And I wrote for five years that article, but it's because of Remy. Mm -hmm. She's like, we've got to stop this. Mm -hmm. She's like, the Caribbean ladies are going through this so much, and they think it's a way of life. Right. She's like, That's I so can't true. make them talk, mm -hmm. right, because of fear. Mm -hmm. She's like, but if we put enough women in front of them, that they could see there's a better way. Yes. She's like, this has got to, you know, be better managed. And mm -hmm. so, Angela, I want to say that today you're brave. And I want to say to Noah, when you told me that you experienced it, it brought back what my publisher said mm -hmm. in the Caribbean community. It's so normal mm -hmm. that they think this mm -hmm. is the way of it's life. Really and it is not. Mm -hmm. That's you know? so true. So I, I'm just really grateful um, I'm sure you guys are going to give out the national number for domestic abuse, mm -hmm. but I just want to do it as an advocate because yes, I feel go good ahead and give it out. No, shell. I actually didn't have yes. it in my notes here. Yes, it's one eight hundred six five six four six seven three one eight hundred six five six four six seven three, and it's also. Um, uh, sign language and, and deaf uh, friendly mm -hmm. so that everybody, there's no excuse. We don't have to stay in this. Um, we have some great local advocates um, in Orlando. One, one, one minute. But um, we have to heal our community. Uh, yes. Um, Trisha, can you hear me? 
Trisha? Yes, I can hear now. Thank okay, you. great, great. Okay. Um, She's been calling and I, my phone doesn't ring because it's all plugged up to the, to the system. So I'm sorry, Trisha. Um, no, just hold a minute, I'm Trisha. I'm going to yield the line. Yeah. Um, yes, she's no. calling in from Jamaica, but it's on WhatsApp. So we can, we, you can stay we, on, Nosha. Please, we can, please stay on because yes. we want to have a panel about this. Tr Trisha? Yes, I'm here. Okay, sure. Trisha is an author in Jamaica. She's also an advocate and also a victim of domestic abuse. She's a, an advocate against it. Trisha, on our panel today, we have uh, Ms. Nochelle Hastings, who is um, also an advocate against domestic abuse like mm -hmm. yourself. And then we have... And a survivor. Uh, and a survivor. And we have... Oh, we lost someone. <laughs> we, lost, we lost Nochelle. Okay. Um, and also in our studios is a mom who lost her daughter mm -hmm. when her estranged boyfriend, not husband, right? No. Her um, slit her boyfriend. throat. Um, oh, wow. So, Trisha, um, welcome to our show. You're um, listening Thanks to... Thanks for it. having me. Yes, and thank you for taking the time to call out because I know you're in Jamaica there, the, the rains are falling, and um, you're t you told me you may not have been able to come on. Um, Trisha wrote a book, and uh, we just want Trisha to share some of her experiences and maybe take a few calls while she's here. And Trisha, say hi to Angela. Angela is here. She's the mom of the, um, her daughter that was murdered. Hi, Trish. Hi, Angelo. I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank that, you. Yeah, it, it's horrific. It was all over the news some years ago. Um, and Five years ago. Five years ago, mm -hmm. you know. I experienced right. also um, a friend of ours, um, a good friend of ours, her daughter was killed by her husband. And um, her daughter grew up with my kids in Jamaica. And it tore us apart. It was all over the news in South Florida. And when he shot her, their child was in the room, mm. you know? Oh, wow. And he called a friend of mine here in Orlando to come and get the child. So he was planning this thing, you know? And so we're not strangers to it. We're not talking off the top of our head. And we're not experts either. We're talking real life experiences with the real human beings. So Trisha, you want to take a minute and um, tell us about yourself, tell us people about the book you wrote, um, what you're doing in Jamaica there now for domestic violence and against it? Sure. So I experienced it myself, as you said. Yes. And so since then, I've written a book about it. And the book is called From I Do to I Don't. Oh, that's a good title. Mm -hmm. And yeah and it it talks about my experience uh the mistakes that i made because essentially i made mis bad i mean i made mistakes because i made the wrong choice bad choices in mm -hmm. the man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and and i started in a relationship we broke up for two years and then we got back together got married mm -hmm. and the fact of the matter is i didn't i guess I ignored the signs is what I want to say, mm -hmm. you know, and so I talk about all of that in the book and the the abuse was it, it was everything. It was emotional, physical, mental, uh, you know, all of that. And the other thing that I want to say, though, is that I not only spoke about my experience in the book, I also talk about the strategies that I used to heal. And I think that is very important mm -hmm. because when we go through this, we oftentimes um, don't do anything about it because we're we're so just wallowing in low self-esteem and fear mm -hmm. and, and you know feeling ashamed. So we don't do anything. We don't. We feel too. I mean, I can tell you, I feel I felt so ashamed mm. that I would have made such a big mistake in the first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you when you think of yourself as you've you're educated, you are a, a successful career woman, whatever it is, and then you make this mistake, what are you thinking? And your family told you no in the first place. Mm -hmm. I was so ashamed mm -hmm. that I didn't want to talk about it. And so for quite a while, I was just there. And so when I got the, the, the download to 
go through these strategies i realize that it really it has we have to share it mm -hmm. and we have to talk about the strategies to heal and i'm i am very grateful for organizations that talk about the fact that we can get up and get out of it mm -hmm. because if we stay in it then that's it for the rest of your life mm -hmm. and your life you're supposed to celebrate your life you're supposed mm -hmm. to be you know satisfied in your life and experience great things in your life you know right, what i mean right. so you know trish. um that is what i talk about mainly in my book mm -hmm. trish i'm going to take a quick quick break and come right back okay you're listening to 1680 WOKB AM, Winter Garden, Florida. What a jerk! Yeah, what a jerk! It's the fifth annual 1 800 411 Pain Orlando Jerk Festival. It's where you hang out with 8,000 of your closest friends and enjoy jerk chicken, jerk pork, jerk fish, jerk everything. We got games for the kids. We got a jerk cook off competition, and the main stage is on fire with the energy god, Elephant Man. The Queen of Reggae herself, Marcia Griffiths. It's electric. And Soka Sensation, Lyrica. And if that's not enough, Maxi Priest. It's the fifth annual 1 800 411 Pain Orlando Jerk Festival. Event info? Get your tickets at OrlandoJerkFestival.com. Kids under 12 are free. Sunday, October 16th at the Central Florida Fairground. Presented by Full of Vibes and 1 800 411 Pain. A medical and lawyer referral service. Imagine this tender goat meat swimming in savory curry, mouth watering jerk chicken smoked in spices, smothered in a tangy homemade sauce. Oh, no hungry yet? Then come savor the flavor at B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant located at the Good Homes Plaza. Curry goats, oxtail, tripe and beans, express and lunch specials, and much more. Visit B&T Jamaican Jerk Restaurant on Facebook or call us at 407-440-4694. And welcome back to the Talk of the Prater Show. We have a few announcements. First of all, I want to say thanks to the Orlando community. Thanks to all the radio announcers on the Caribbean um, Saturday that helped us out to promote the kickoff anniversary session of our 60th anniversary. It was a gospel concert last week, last Sunday. And we had artists like uh, Mark Meeks, Ripton Morris, Noel Willis. Um, the, the, the praise team, they also did an awesome job. We had uh, Abigail Hamilton, we had uh, Najee Leslie, and Abraham Ogunladi. In fact, I think that's the order in which they appeared. And we had over 387 people in the house, and the Metro, Metro West of the Nazarene really, really had a very spiritual uh, a time that people were talking about. People are still calling us and saying, when is the next concert like that? We just want to say thank you to everyone who is involved and who put um, their time and their efforts in to make this thing such a big success and where we can meet and praise the Lord in a, in a good environment. I also want to talk about an event that's coming up November 5th. It's going to be also at Metro West Church. It's a fall festival and a medical health fair. Health fair. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be taking, doing blood pressure, blood sugar screening, free flu shots by Walgreens, Affordable Care Act, going to be um, an enrollment clinic there. The Big Red Bus will be there, Give Blood, Give Life. Um, health Professionals, Health Booths, um, Health Central will be there, Eyeglass World, Care Plus, Vitas, Community Health Centers. Wellness, going to be there with Mary Kay, Shackley, Massage. Um, you're going to have a fire engine demonstration and information on diabetes, human trafficking. And then you're going to have prizes and giveaways. And um, not of course, not the last but not least, Patties will be on sale there, and that is something that is free to the public, but if you want to have a booth or a vendor booth, it's only $25, and it's something you don't want to miss. It's going to be very, very informative for the community, and we want to um, just send out one of our ministries where we do this outreach. Um, thank you, Tricia. Thank you. Um, What's the office number to call? Office number. If, they, if you want to get a booth. Um, 407 Two nine three two seven eight one. Thank, Thank you, you, Beverly. Yeah. And this is at the Metro West Church of the Nazarene. We're located at 3705 North Apopka Vineland Road. It's at the intersection of AD Mims and Apopka Vineland. Um, and we're back. We're, our topic today is one that touches the heart of many people. 
And we know some of our listeners who are um, going through this because it touches almost every single community, every single walk of life. Mm -hmm. And maybe every family can say, yes, we had experienced it in some way or another. Um, if someone wants to call in, they can call in at 407-894-1680. And you'll be calling in to the New Inspiration 1680 WKB, the heart and soul of the community. And welcome back to our um, panel of um, three ladies. I'm the only guy in the studio, but I'm not afraid of them. Um, I know they'll take good <laughs> care of me when I make a mistake. Beverly will take care of me. Um, welcome back, ladies. And Trisha, you're still there? Yes, I'm still here. Thank okay. you for, for holding on. <coughs> Had to take care of some business sure. there. All right, back to what you were saying, Tricia. Right, so, um, you know, the thing that's important is getting up out of the shame and the hurt and the, all of the negative emotions and, and, and spiritual things that happen to you when you are abused because spiritually you feel like you can't, you can't pray, you can't praise, you can't do anything. So it's almost like you're dead even though you're still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, so the important part for me was writing about the strategies that I used to heal. Uh, I, I even went to Bible school, really. And all of that, everything that came together got me to a place where I could actually get up and write that book, mm -hmm. where I could get up and then become a radio host, mm -hmm. a blogger, all of these different things. And, and so I, I do talks on domestic abuse, but I do even more than that. Mm -hmm. Where I'm at now is all about the holistic prosperity of women i mean not just about abuse but okay after abuse or if you, you know you've been through some kind of bad experience mm -hmm. what do you want to do next do you right. want to sit in how do you live a complete you life and, exactly. and women should be celebrated you know yes, yes. and so that's that's what i'm about no i mm -hmm. i do events as well i have one coming up on october 29 um, smart, fabulous, and single, and that targets single women. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing empowerment talks. We'll have spa services, makeovers, trunk show, all sorts of different um, activities going on. You know, Patricia, and, go ahead um, and give all the information. I, I'm too. just happy that I can be a part of all that's happening worldwide for women because i've been there and i know that when we sit down and we do nothing mm -hmm. then women continue to hurt and I, I don't want to see that i've been there i don't i don't need to see any more of that, of that happening to our women or to myself for right. that matter right. okay and for you know? our jamaican listeners um tell us where your event's gonna be trisha will last you yeah, I could I couldn't hear that just now. Where is your event going to be on October 29th? Oh, October 29th, we're going to be at Campion College, which is my alma mater. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> uh, traitor, we're going to be at traitor. Campion College. <laughs> and um, we will have, as I said, the empowerment talks, but we'll have a mini expo because mm -hmm. this is our first time around for Smart, Fabulous and Single. Mm -hmm. And we'll have wonderful women speaking from the stage um, who... We're not talking just about domestic abuse. In fact, we're, t we're empowering women. So yes, that will be mentioned, but we'll be talking also about getting noticed in the workplace. We'll be talking about smart financial planning, mm -hmm. about living on purpose, about chasing what matters and overcoming your giants and being fabulous and fabulous for us starts in the mind. So your thoughts and the way you speak mm -hmm. and also, of course, in your deportment and dress and that kind of thing. Right. So it will be held at Campion College, which is 105 old hope road in kingston mm -hmm. right and yeah. a phone four number any phone numbers for people who want to reach in jamaica she's not hearing me are you shit you just you just broke up a while ago uh, let me change my position do you want to <laughs> do you want to say your phone number or what's your contact information did you ask for a phone number or your contact information yeah we, I think we're losing her because I'm hearing her. But I think that she's in a bad location. Yes. Patricia, if you want to call back in, she's not hearing. All Hello. Right. I, I think we lost. Well, we're hearing her real well. Are you hearing us, Trish? Oh, I'm hearing you now. Okay, just share I'm, I'm your contact information real Can quick. You ask again. Share your contact information. Yes. So it's the number is eight seven six triple nine fifteen seventeen and the email address is women inspiring prosperity at outlook.com 
Okay, great. Thank you. Well, um, thank you for all that you're doing. I'd, like I just said um, on the beginning of the show, domestic violence thrives when we are silent. But if we take a stand and work together, we can end this. So thank you so much for all that you do. Um, you're welcome to stay on if you like um, while Angela, you know, shares some more of what she's doing to be able to cope with this. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? I'm here. No, this is just a show. I'm just uh, okay. going <laughs> yeah. back. And yeah, because we lost you. Angela, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. We, we have uh, Trisha on the line in Jamaica, but I, I don't know if it's a service. Um, we're hearing her, but she's not hearing us. Yes, unfortunately, Jamaica is under hurricane watch, and they're already getting... Um, uh, they're already getting things from it, heavy rains. I just yeah. spoke to my mom on the way over here. So we have to really pray for the island. Right. It's a Category 5 hurricane that's expected to hit Jamaica. And if they're getting so. anything that is close to what I'm seeing through our windows here, yes, it's, it's coming down in here. buckets <laughs> here. I don't know I don't know how we're going to get out without a rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, but um, welcome back. We just have um, another 20 minutes or so, but we wanted to talk to Angela uh, a little bit more. Um, and also, no shell to give us some more information about her, proj her project that she's doing. Because um, we have this project, she was saying, like mornings, Monday mornings, uh, no shell. It mo mo moving on Mondays. Yes, tell us um, about it a little moving, bit. Moving on, moving on Mondays is the first Monday of every month yes. that we meet at a private location. Mm -hmm. um, different, we connect the ladies to different areas mm -hmm. wherever we get the most feedback that there's a need. And it's where we come together and we pray mm -hmm. and we focus on uh, inspirational topics or we take a courageous woman. Our woman actually this month is our Elder Angela Pittman, who will be focusing on teaching and talking at the prisons. I just want to back up to the um, video that you played, Noel, at the beginning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So many people are incarcerated because they didn't tell anyone. Yes. yes and they took matters into their own hands mm. when it when they became desperate right and because there was nothing on file it just seemed as if it was something premeditated yes. right right yes. and wow. so i was uh sharing once even on tvn that the best thing that the last thing they asked me you know when they asked you look into that camera and say you know 30 seconds mm -hmm. of your last remarks mm -hmm. I looked into that camera and I said, if this is happening to you, you have to open your mouth and you have to tell someone. Mm. Yes. Because if you don't, when you take matters into your own hands to protect yourself or to protect your children, you can pay double. Right. Because you will be held accountable mm -hmm. in a court of law. It will be very difficult to prove that you're innocent. Yes. Wow. Because you didn't tell anyone and we understand it's not easy because of embarrassment mm -hmm. but if i could look at you in your face today the one thing that i would say is you have to tell somebody mm -hmm. i told a lady years ago when he killed me you'd let them know that it was no accident mm. i was tired of going into Brookdale with my nose bashed and my face bashed wow. and I just told one person when he because I felt like any day would be my last mm -hmm. yes. and I told her when he kills me not you if. tell them it was no accident not mm -hmm. if when wow. yeah, not if but when wow. but that's what happens if we don't get out and so what Angela is doing this month and, and we're asking her she focuses on talking to those women in prison mm -hmm. they're there because they try to protect themselves but they're there because they fail to say something mm -hmm. right and we're talking to pastor's wives because it happens in the church i was married to a minister mm -hmm. and it happened mm -hmm. so wow. this is very real and that's where the greatest silence is when it's happening in church yes yes yeah uh, and, oh, yeah. and, and other ladies oh, yeah. tell you to take it too yes now, Angela, how how do you even begin to, with, with a woman that's in prison for, for protecting herself, how do you even begin to show her the love of God or, you know, how, how where do you start from? Well, when you, you know, 
when you become defensive and you have to defense defend your own self, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're at that mode, you're desperate. Mm-hmm. And like you were saying and, and Michelle was saying, you, you didn't really reach out to anybody that maybe could have given you some advice or maybe could have pulled you out or could have pulled you out right. of that situation. Yes. Um that's very difficult, um, because People are very quiet and private Mm -hmm. when those type of things occur. Mm -hmm. Um, I myself, even though my daughter is not here, I'm very private about uh, the way she died Mm -hmm. Mm because I know she was a very private person. So it's certain things I just don't say. Right. You know, so, you know. Being abused is is a very embarrassing thing. Mm -hmm. It it affects your Mm -hmm. self-esteem, and it affects the purpose that God has for your life. Mm -hmm. And you become shameful, and you don't want anybody to know that this relationship is failing. Mm -hmm. So all of those things mount up, and then... You know, yes. at at the wrong time, right. you you release those feelings and mm-hmm. you can put yourself or someone yeah. else in harm's way. Mm-hmm. Right. And we want to say, um, Nochelle mentioned um, the video. It, it, we did find it's a video we found on YouTube, and um, I want to play it real quick again in the middle of the show here. Um, we're running out of time. Don't worry. All these numbers do not mean we will be doing math today. These numbers are actually related to the domestic violence problem we have in America. Count to nine. Every nine seconds, a woman is assaulted or beaten in our country. The number 20,000 actually represents the amount of daily calls domestic violence helplines receive nationwide. 500%? The presence of a handgun in a domestic violence situation increases the likelihood of homicide by 500%. 8.3 billion? That's the amount of money society loses each year due to intimate partner violence. And sadly, addiction and domestic violence often go hand in hand. A recent study claimed that 65% of gambling addicts reported to be the perpetrator or victim of domestic violence. And while women are often the victims, men quietly are victims as well. About 5 million men were the victims of domestic violence last year. Domestic violence isn't a problem for just victims. It's actually a problem for all of us. So do your part. Do not stay silent. That is, that is happening every day. You must have thrown a thousand pitches teaching him to hit a home run. Spent countless Saturdays running routes so he could learn to hit an open receiver. Endless afternoons teaching him how to hit the three-pointer. But how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Teaching boys that all violence against women is wrong is one of the most important things a man can do. Learn how to start the conversation at teachearly.org. Brought to you by Futures Without Violence and the Ad Council. And I just want to say um, that one of the things he mentioned in um, the, the, the statistics, 65% are gamblers or whatever involved. My dad loved to gamble. We were poor, but he spent everything gambling and then beat mom. And that was what I grew up in. Uh, ladies, I can't say I feel your pain. Um, I never was abused by any of my spouses, um, but I know as a child, experiencing it has its price. We, we suffered. 
we suffer, we're afraid of dad when he gets angry. It's almost like Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. He's the sweetest man, quiet, soft-spoken, but when he gets angry, when he gets angry, dad was a monster. I love you, dad, but it was a tr it's the truth. Uh, welcome back to the Talk It Up Radio Show. We're on the New Inspiration 1680 WKB, the heart and soul of the community. And we have on the lines uh, Miss Nochelle Hastings, um, my goddaughter, Miss Trisha Ann Morris, and in our studios, Elder Angela Pittman and Beverly and Megan are also here. And we want to try and wrap this thing up. We're running out of time. Coming up next is the Jamming Radio Show with um, Countryman. And we just want to put as much information out there for anyone who is hiding or cowering under the bed right now or being beaten in traffic. Um, I know one guy flew his wife up from Jamaica into Miami and beat her and sent her back home. Oh, yes. <laughs> and um, we're actually going to be dedicating the whole month's show to... Um, domestic violence aw awareness. Next week we have um, Evelyn Herrera Jackson who's going to be here. She's the director of um, outreach services at the Help Now Shelter um, and she'll be here next week on the show. But um, ju just to wrap it up, ladies, um, any, any final thoughts you want to say? Well, um, this is Trisha. Hi, Trisha. <laughs> And I want to say that it's so easy to make the mistake of being with someone because we feel desperate to be in a relationship mm -hmm. or because we want the economic security. Mm -hmm. But I think we have to start as women to think about our security from a mental, spiritual and physical place first mm -hmm. and, um, and just start to, you know, get help because as I said, one of the reasons I did it was low self-esteem without even realizing that I had low self-esteem. I was so desperate mm -hmm. for marriage and children, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we just we, we, we just want to move from a place of, you know, thinking that the man is the answer to our problems because he's not. It's all about God first, right. you know? And, and pay and attention so to the warning to signs. To celebrate God and celebrate ourselves right. as well. Right. There are always warning signs, too. So, you know, it's very important to pay yeah. attention to those red flags. We have uh, we have a caller on the line. I wasn't able to answer the phone. I don't know if the caller is still there. Are you still the idea caller? Yes, and I called at the last minute. But, however, you're having a very interesting and heartbreaking topic today. Uh, but however, uh, I was informed that if you uh, raised or brought up in a home with a lot of violence, that that individual uh, will also be violent. And that is not true because uh, it appears that you and your wife, Beverly, have a good relationship. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I believe that a lot of crime and physical and Myth, uh, mental abuse are going on because some of the things that people say, like Mr. Dunny Mill say things he shouldn't be saying, and this other guy named Tommy that come on the radio, uh, I believe uh, that a lot of crime is going on because some of the things that people say. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Have a nice okay, thank you. Thank you for calling, caller. So, um, like we were saying, Trish, Trish and um, if you're still there, uh, yes, I'm here. The warning signs are usually there, and for those of us who either don't listen to family or, most importantly, don't listen to God, when we f when we feel that tug, that this is not quite right, but we still decide to go our own way and do it our way, then you know yes. the consequences come. So if we can educate people and let them, you know, just let them know that they really need to pay attention to that. And, and and when you listen and follow the right way, it's usually usually goes good for you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of research and and resources. There are mm -hmm. lots of resources that tell us what the warning signs are. And mm -hmm. even the caller just know. Mm -hmm. I mean the per the way the person speaks to you, the things the person does yes. or doesn't do, yes. says or doesn't say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those things are important. And mm -hmm. and how he treats other people, particularly his mother and other women. Right. Those are things That's to look at as that. well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Angela, anyone any last words you wanna say? 
Um, I just want to say, too, um, sometimes women, because of their own uh, lo- low self-esteem or even love for the human race, mm-hmm. they can be come too compassionate yes. and sometimes they feel sorry for that person mm-hmm. and that's also another avenue for the domestic violence to continue mm-hmm. um, and then they blame themselves right. every Guilty, time the abuse right. happened they say maybe it was my fault right. they could have did something better mm-hmm. and they kind of lock into the fact that that person might have the potential to do better mm-hmm. and they hoping that that would occur that would at some point yes. and yes. a lot of time it doesn't. it doesn't change it just escalates Yes. until you know unfortunately it ended up like oh your daughter you know it's so so tragic so. but you know i have a new role now i have mm-hmm. her daughter yes. she's was seven at that time now she's 12 wow. and she's doing wonderful mm-hmm. and um you know um god has graced me mm-hmm. and i'm uh not gonna say i'm healed and but I'm healing and it's um, one day at a time and and Mm -hmm. and sometime one moment at a time yes yes. but I'm just grateful that God brought me this far Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. because if it if I had not had his help and his presence I wouldn't be able to sit here Mm -hmm. to talk about someone that's so dear to my heart and um was such a fun and loving person Mm -hmm. and you know i'm i'm you know i'm grateful to to god because um we we can list all the facts of domestic violence things people should do and shouldn't do Mm -hmm. and you know all of that but people have to be taught Sometime, unfortunately, mm-hmm. through their own experience, mm-hmm. and and I think the greatest thing is to be able to say something to someone if you're in that situation. Absolutely, because everybody's so. not going to pick up from the literature or mm-hmm. all of that. They're going to pick up when somebody right. demonstrates the love of God mm-hmm. to them and say, "Hey, you know, I think that you're in a dangerous situation, right. or I think you should watch out for this or that." Yes. You know, so right. I yes. think is that that support in in the community mm-hmm. and and that love that you love your neighbor if you hear hollering and screaming and all that kind of stuff you, get involved. you know call yes. the police even yes. though if it's a mistake that yeah. you call yes. you know yes. but at least you, you, might save you a made life. an attempt to yes. save that person's yes. life absolutely well, we want to thank you so much for being on the show thank you um, thank you Trishan um, God bless both of you. Thank you you you've been through some traumatic times but thank you for all you do to get the word out there and you will definitely be saving some lives amen and God Thank bless you, ladies. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Bye, Michelle. Yes. Bye, Bye, Trish. And uh, listening next week when we will have um, the director from the Help Now Shelter, she will come in and share some information on what they're doing to help in the community with um, survivors. And uh, have a great week, everyone. Uh, well, let me talk some more. <laughs> um, uh, for those uh, for Jamaican listeners, please be safe. I know the hurricane is should be barreling d- down there um, early tomorrow morning. Uh, we, we're praying that everything will work out and that there will be minimal damages and no lives lost. Awesome, awesome. We want to thank everyone again who came out to the um, gospel concert which we had over there at Metro West of the Nazarene and thank everyone who helped us to promote it on the radio on Saturdays from Dr. Lee Fat, um, Lady D, uh, Countryman, Brian, Ivy and if I forgot your name I owe you lunch. <laughs> um, this is one of those shows that really tugs at my heartstring. Um, sometimes I get choked up. Um, I don't consider myself weak if I get choked up because I have human feelings real feelings and um sometimes men do cry and it does help when you cry i want to say to the man or the woman out there who is finding themselves where they think they have to abuse their spouse or their partner um that you're doing the wrong thing uh go seek some help walk away walk away um i know i've gotten angry in some relationships where i drive away and by the time I reached the end of the island in Jamaica, I forgot why I drove away in the first place. <laughs> but it does help. Mm-hmm. I never used to drink. I didn't like it. I didn't smoke. Um, so I wasn't burying my, my um, feelings in any um, alcohol. 
We want to thank everyone for listening to our show tonight, being patient with us. Okay, we're going to take the last minute and have Angela just say a prayer real quick. Okay, Angela's going to pray. Okay. Go ahead, Angela. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, Lord. We pray all across America, across every nation, Father, that you would help your people, that you would help these women, help these women that feel helpless and any man that's in any, in any abusive relationship, Father. We pray that the awareness becomes so strong that women and men will realize that they do not have to accept this t- a type of treatment or this way of life. Father, I pray that you would cover the children, cover the families throughout our communities, Orlando, Oviedo, all the following ca- counties, God, that you would cover them. Those women that are pastors, those women that are uh, married and that are ministers, God, that also are being abused. Father, I pray that you would expose the enemy in that yes. area and that you would let them know also, Lord, that they don't have to accept this way of life. Mm-hmm. God, we pray that everyone that hear the sound of this message, God, that will go across the airways of the hearts of the people, God, and that you would save them, Lord, from any death or any harm or any hurt. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you, everyone. See you next week. Your access has been granted. Jamming, jamming radio. Catch them when it comes to music. The Mavit Lap.